Hello, this is Maritza Ortega and Mari J. Perez. We have been sharing with you the topic of decluttering your life. Last time we talked about decluttering your life in the area of health and well being, correct, Mari? Yes. This time we will be talking about the area of productivity and creative energy. Mari, would you like to explain that area? Yes, absolutely. Productivity is just in plain words about getting things done, achieving those results, those goals that you have. And for that, we need to be creative. We need to have creative and original ways and sometimes effective and efficient ways to get things done. So tell us, Marisa, what happened when you go to you know, a client's house and you see stuff everywhere. How do you think that clutter is affecting their ability to be productive and creative? I see that when there is clutter in an environment, it affects our productivity and in our creativity because things that would take us a specific amount of time will end up take us twice the time. It, we're not as productive we ha when we have an environment full of things that we not necessarily need. One of the things that I do notice is people have, or we tend to have so much in an area, maybe a work area, that it produces us to want to escape. Sometimes we want to go grab a snack. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we rather take and look at our phone, uh, what other people are doing, just to avoid the work that we have to do because there is so much that we cannot produce, we cannot concentrate. In fact, sometimes people want to even escape the environment and the, the environment as a whole. And that's when they even consider selling the house because they think there is not enough space. And that can happen when we have too much. There is just no space for us to accomplish the things that we want to accomplish. So in this case, when people are thinking about selling their house and I come and address the situation, address the room, address the house, I always, always suggest they start decluttering. Everything that is not a necessity needs to be stored, packed, put away so that the room can feel bigger, brighter, and more spacious. That's what we want the buyer to perceive, a room where there is a lot of space where they can work, feel happy, feel productive, the creativity can flow. So one the, once the, the homeowner who's about to sell the house starts decluttering and see how much space there really is, that makes them feel that they want to to do the work now they can tackle that project that work that they are about to that they've been wanting to do and they just haven't been able to because there's so much that is not allowing them to do in this case whether they are selling the house or thinking about staying in the house and just rearranging the way they live i always suggest to have a place for everything and everything in its place because that's going to allow us to be more productive. When I am about to work on a project, I don't have to be looking for that receipt. I don't have to be looking for that paper, that book, that, that special assignment that I need in that moment, because I know where it is. I know that I put it in a place and it, that it's where it belongs and I can easily find it there and start working in my project. That's number one, to have a place for everything and everything in its place. And I always recommend to start with a clear palette or a clear canvas. I would say every night when you have finished completing your work, a project, clean up your area so that the next day when you're starting to, to work or when you're ready, when you're fresh, you can go ahead and do that. Accomplish the project that you're working on because now you can start fresh. Now you have nothing that can distract you. So those are my two recommendations when people are living in the house. And of course, when they're selling, less is more. So remove everything that is not a necessity so that the room can be perceived as big and spacious. Now, the other area that is affected is our creativity. When we have 
physical clutter, it can make us feel stressed, anxious, frustrated. If we cannot mm -hmm. find that thing that we're looking for, we're going to feel frustrated. We're going to generate negative thoughts. So that is a mental clutter. It's producing mental clutter. Mari, as a life coach and being an expert in this area, would you like to explain the mental clutter and how we can work in that area? Mental clutter is the most common things that I see in the clients that I work with. And it's just a cacophony of ideas and thoughts flying everywhere with no order, no theme, and it feels chaotic. Uh, mental clutter produces foggy thinking, and foggy thinking is the opposite to creative thinking. In creative thinking, ideas flow, and we find new ways and even ideas and solutions to the issues that we have to resolve. When uh, I start working with a person that feels that I have a lot in their mind, the first thing I do is I, I ask them, what's going on? Tell me. And then I just let them put everything out. And sometimes it's, it feels like they can stop talking. And then I ask them questions. So out of all the things you told me, that that seems to be a lot, by the way, what is the most important or pressing matter to you uh, or what is that a thing that you want to achieve the most because when we ask one person again less is more what is one thing what is one concern what is your number one idea or your number one uh, goal that you have that helps organize the thinking and mental clutter is uh, so in my idea that physical clutter as you said can impact mental clutter and uh, one of the ways that I have seen uh, mental clutter happens is when we have so much going on, it affects the way we feel in our body because uh, it activates our nervous system and we start feeling antsy, we still having uh, feeling tensions in our body, sometimes it's a, a tension in our stomach or that butterfly feeling. And uh, I practice when I'm feeling that way, just taking five minutes of, if sometimes even less, two minutes, where you close your eyes and you connect to your breathing and you take a deep breath, you inhale, you exhale, and you ask yourself, what is that I'm feeling? Where do I feel the tension? And what, what do I think is going on with me? How? What is that emotion that I'm feeling? Is it sadness? I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling anxiety. And once you start naming it, and then things like your nervous system almost say, oh, okay, now we know what's going on. Another way that I, that I recommend to address mental clutter is to journal. Sometimes it's just free writing where you just let your pencil and the paper go and you drop everything there. Or it could be organizing your ideas, you know. What, what, is, what is in my head that I need to put in paper? When we write down, we actually lock the right and left brain. One is logical and the other is holistic. And when we can accomplish that, that helps build a lot of clarity. Uh, also, asking yourself, what is the most important thing that I want to accomplish? And I keep saying that there is no uh, favorable wind to the sailor that doesn't have a clear destination. And we are more prone to get distracted, to feel clutter in our minds when we have so much going on. Again, less is more. What is one thing that I want to accomplish? And then I put all my energy to get there. I organize my thinking to get there. And when there is all these uh, thoughts flying away, I say, no, I, I know what, what I need to do today. And that thought is not going to help me. And we start becoming more selective and um, taking charge of our thinking process. It is very funny that you mentioned journaling, Mari, because one way in which I like to declutter my mind is by journaling, by writing it down. And I was going to ask you if that is a, a good way to clear our mind because there might be days when I, maybe it's not my space that's cluttered, mm -hmm. but my mind. And I ask myself, okay, what is bothering me? What's that feeling that's 
blocking my energy. Sometimes it's sadness, sometimes anger, frustration, self-doubt, comparison. But if we first acknowledge that feeling, then we can write it down and identify what is causing that feeling. Mm -hmm. And that not only is going to help us process, but also find a solution. Also, when you put it in paper, what makes me feel is like I can leave it there. I'm clear now and I can go on and work in whatever area I'm trying to or whatever I'm trying to achieve because now my mind is clear. It's not bothering me. Sometimes it's not in here. It's in the paper and now I am good to go. Yeah. So I love that suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think less is more and also we have to be responsible on what happens in our mind. There has been research about what they call negative, automatic negative thoughts. And um, I was very interested when I read that we sometimes have 60,000, 70,000 of those automatic thoughts across our mind. And they clutter our mind really quick. We have to be responsible in recognizing that a lot of the mental activity is really not thinking, it's just mental activity. Mm -hmm. You're right, Maddie. So in conclusion, whether we're talking about a physical environment or our mental environment, less is more. Yes. And decluttering our life will definitely help us achieve more and will enhance our productivity and our creativity. Correct, Nadi? Correct, less is more. Less is more. Thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to sharing with you next week on what is the next, next area? Next we're gonna talk about clutter and relationships. I love that, yes. clutter and relationships, removing toxic people, right? Yes, or how managing clutter impacts our relationships when we don't have time to go and spend quality time with our uh, kids and our spouses because we need to organize some clutter. I am very excited about next week, Maria, next topic. I hope you can join us and thank you for being with us today. And this has been Maritza Ortega and Mari J. Perez. Bye. Bye.